Gambit Chads, have I got a treat for you in this video. First, just next, we will look at me beating a Grandmaster with this Von Hennig Gambit of after D takes E4 against the Karakhan, instead of recapturing on Palm, we're going to play Bishop C4. I beat a Grandmaster with this just in this most recent title Tuesday. Then after that, another really, really quick checkmate and kill I, I, I had in this line in one of the more passive variations Black can play. And so then it's like, okay, what should Black actually do? And I started researching this question myself, and I will show some more theory and my recommendation for Black and what we can do against that in some absolutely crazy lines at the end of this video. And I know I have another video on the Von Hennig Gambit, this line, and I just don't like being the type of YouTuber who's like, oh, go watch my other video for this other coverage of this part. So I'll try to re review some other important parts of this theory. Okay, without further ado, here's me beating a Grandmaster, beating up those Gambit deniers. Enjoy. I'll be back. We are playing a GM. Let's go. A 2834 Grandmaster from Poland? What is this? Poland. All right, and or without lag. Awesome. All right, let's see if we can get him with a Von Hennig Gambit. Yes. <laughs> we have a Von Hennig Gambit on the board in the first round of Title Tuesday against a strong GM. What did he just hit me with? A5? I guess the point is, whoa, uh, B5 and I guess he would want to take this, right? What is this? If I take this, B5, Bishop D3 takes... Knight f3. I could also just play a4 and transpose back into normal stuff. But the other also... Okay, you know what? Yeah, let's just transpose back into stuff I know. Oh, and he declines... Hmm. Okay, this was weird. All right, no worries. What if I just take this, come back, bishop d3? So, okay, he declined my von Hennig by pushing e3 here. He might want to attack... Oh, he plays this with bishop f5. So I can decline this trade with bishop b5. Yeah, I think that's pretty interesting, actually. And then I can maybe attack this bishop with g4 next turn. He may play h5 to stop me. What's up? Well, yeah, we got the gambit glasses on, although I don't think I deserve them because he declined my gambit. All right, I'll just play an 82, see what's going on. If he castles, okay, now we get to attack. This is where the fun begins. I guess he wants to maybe probably play e5 at some moment. All right, let's start with this move, bishop h6. We're going to castle and we're going to play h4, h5 to attack him on the king's side. Okay, we got this move. Yeah, maybe throwing in g4 would have been helpful. Then bishop d3 would have made a lot of sense. All right, let's just take it, though. And maybe this move knight g3. So now if he takes me, I'm going to take this with check. And I don't think you want g takes a 5 in front of your king. So probably... Oh, he allows this? Okay, I have this check right now. No, okay, I'll just take back here. Okay, this is the question. Do I have anything with an attack this way? Or should I just castle short? I think I actually probably should just castle short. Because the king's going to hide on h8, right? Alright, let's just castle. Alright, so... I don't know, maybe I have a tiny advantage, but it's not much. Um, yep, yeah, he tucks the king there. I like this idea. Check just king over, right? The other thing that's coming is queen b6. All right, you know, it's fine. 
I'm just going to come back here to protect this and shift my rook over here to put some pressure. And then b4 comes. But I'm super low on time and the pieces are lagging a bit. So not great. This is a mate threat. Like to play b4 now, defense c3. Pieces are lagging, it sucks. But this is a pretty good position for me, I think. My rook's gonna invade on what is the only open file. I think he thought he could just kind of flag me by playing quickly, but. Position looks good. Rook b8 to win this pawn. Okay, so he does something passive. Rooks look good. Oh, he's breaking. Oh, I didn't see that. Um, okay. Oh my god. Whoa. Whoa. What a mouse slip. Wait, that was a crazy mouse slip. He just hung his... He just hung some material there. He just hung his rook. As long as I can move fast enough, I'm gonna win. Wait, what a crazy mouse slip. Okay. Don't lag on me now. I just should have gone with the other ruck. Oh wait, I can just force a trade of rucks here. And I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win! Oh my god, I'm gonna beat a GM with the Von Henning Gambit. In the first round of Title Tuesday. Oh my goodness. I forced a trade of rucks. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, he's trying to stalemate himself. Mate. Boom! We won! We won! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> That's so funny. He just hung his ruck. He just hung his ruck. Oh my god. We got him. <laughs> we got him. The Gambit glasses got him. 77 accuracy for me, 69 accuracy for him. Who is this guy anyway? Mar Marcin Kurznowski. We got him with the Von Hennig Gambit over a GM. Oh my god, it's too funny. Too funny. Yeah, this move A5 shows a question mark. Okay, so yeah, if I just took this, I guess his idea was B5? And then maybe taking this pawn? These pieces are lagging. Let's go. Okay. Okay, wait, but let's just look at the game. So, okay, we traded there. I mean, we, we gotta analyze this. So, this position's just like probably pretty good for me. And then something went wrong. So, I'm at a plus advantage if I play g4. So he had an 87 in the game. And if I just chase this knight away first, then I can come back with the bishop to this square, if I chase the bishop away. And then all I want to do next is bishop h6, h4, h5, make a trade here, make a trade there, and queen h6 check. So that's the big idea that I had in the game of just attacking over here. I never really got to do that, though. Um, so, okay, and at this point, it's pretty balanced. It's pretty balanced. I guess I got outplayed somehow. But it's very equal here. This was a blunder because so basically yeah i mean i want to play b4 and then take advantage of this pin here so eventually like i won the game with that open a file i mean it wasn't really because of the opening that i won so we're now we're a3 i'm defending c3 pawn and i want to play b4 what's up merciless we just beat a gm with the von henne gambit all right so we traded and then, then we opened up this was a missed win 
It's saying, recommending like king h2. It seems kind of strange. Basically, I want to attack this pawn, but then this rook would need to defend c3 from this guy. So check. Defend. It's a blunder. I got an exclam for that. Oh, so this is completely winning if I go rook here. So it trades the rooks, and then... The thing is, this rook's completely out of place. And then, yeah, this rook can attack, like, all these weaknesses. And these are too far apart for the king to defend all of them. So I should have swapped there. But otherwise, okay, this is still much better for me. This was a blunder. Rook d8 check. Yeah, so taking king c5 was something I missed. It wasn't even good. Yeah, okay, just a lot of mistakes all around. None bigger than this. <laughs> None bigger than this, where I guess he meant to put the rook there. And then, and then, <laughs> I mean, I really won because of the mouse slip. I don't know, but this position, okay, if he plays rook c4, I mean, the evaluation is plus 0.3. I mean, he had a big time advantage, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but okay, we won. Subscribe if that goes on YouTube. We beat a GM with the Von Hennig Gambit. <laughs> you declined it, but it still worked. Awesome. We're 3-0 in the arena. <laughs> and I think we're on the front. Oh, we're 11th. We're not quite on the front page. All right, let's see if we can't get a Von Hennig Gambit against the Karo here. What's going on? Did my D4 confuse you? It takes. And Von Hennig Gambit. Von Hennig Gambit. Okay, so, oh, okay, but this this could transpose into the line with native six and f three, and I think this could if we get we got an acceptance, so this can show really well. So this bishop is not going to be in the game, and this could show really well how to take advantage of Von Hennig sidelines. All right, we're going to maneuver our queen to h four. Slide in this way. Oh, we're also going to put the bishop on g five. We're going to put this back on d three. And we're going to attack. It is attack time. Bishop. Okay, bishop is going to come back here. Bishop g5, h4. Big stuff coming. Big moves coming. Queen h4. All right, so now we're, we're, we're looking at h7 is basically the point. All right, we're looking at h7, and we're going to put a lot of pressure on that knight. That pawn can never go to h6 to relieve that, because this sacrifice will come. Okay, I mean, he, he tries it, but I will end it. Oh, no. That sacrifice is just too strong. So this bishop was on c4. There was nothing much on this diagonal. Peek back on d3. Mate threat's there. Too strong. Too strong, and they just need chief like like this. This is just gonna kill. It's just gonna kill. These pieces just never got are getting in the game. It's just going to kill. It's just GGs. It's just GGs. These pieces are so far from the game. Basically, bishop h seven check is coming. I mean, also I could take this knight. But yeah, I mean, if you didn't move that h pawn, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna play bishop g five. So then you have to like be able to replace that knight to guard h7, right? And then I'm going to play, after bishop g5, I'm going to play knight e5. I'm going to put so many guys onto trying to sacrifice um, on f6 to take h7. Eventually, you'll have to either play h6 or g6, which will create major weaknesses that it will take advantage of. Okay, this is some desperate desperation. King takes h2 and h4. That's what he was going for, forking my king and queen. So just going to step out the way. Not a bad try. Probably the best try try yet. Queen takes h2 is also, of course, very possible, but I'll just take the imminent checkmate instead. Not a bad try, but using the one piece that, that is actually developed, this knight is just overwhelmed. It was stuck there guarding queen h7, as it typically is in these lines. Basically, so the issue they had is when they played e6. It was all the way back when they played e6, cutting off the bishop. This bishop needs to be able to help out in the game. Um, but there's other ways in the Von Hennig Gambit that we take advantage of the bishop coming out. And checkmate is on the way. Checkmate is on the way. I mean, I could show you here. So in this position, e6 right now. So like, okay, you could have transposed with this move knight f6. is standard to here, take, take, and then e6. Instead of bringing the bishop out to either f5 or g4. Both of which can have problems. Bishop f5 is, is much better. Okay, I can take this knight. Um, let's 
checking over. And that's mate in a couple. King h8, that's checkmate. Mate takes h7. Queen takes. Queen over. And we're using all our friends here. GG. Subscribe if that goes on YouTube. Say hi to YouTube. Got him again. We're fifth in the arena. So, I'm back. What should Black do? What should Black actually do if you are a Karo Khan player and you face the deathly Von Hennig Gambit? Knight c3 here. Okay, first starters, sorry, there's really not a good move other than d takes e4 because, okay, there's no way for this knight to go. Knight d7 just actually loses this pawn because the queen no longer defends d5. Bishop doesn't really have a spot. Knight f6 just gets hit with e5. G6 is like kind of a move, but white can just do whatever. So really, d takes e4 is the move, and knight takes e4 is overwhelmingly most common, as you see here in the database, 92% of the games. But we are playing here bishop c4. Okay, knight f6, right? What else are you going to play? Defends the pawn, harmless move, f3. Okay, okay. So there's a couple of really, really nice tricks here. I mean, you see he takes f3 being played 60% uh, of the time. But yeah, after he takes f3, knight takes f3, black here should know not to play this move, bishop g4, and also not to play this move e6, which is the most common move, and bishop g4 being second. But e6, as you saw in my games, and uh, I'll link the original von Hennig video below, where you'll see another one of my games where I beat up on, on this e6 move. But it gives us great attacking prospects because it shuts out this light square bishop. If they play bishop g4, we have this really, really nice trick, knight e5. Uh, actually letting our queen hang because this is checkmate and you see about 5,000 people have actually gotten that far in the database. Bishop h5 doesn't even help because you can give your queen again. This is still checkmate. Uh, and otherwise, you know, if they just guard mate, you're threatening knight takes g4. If they play bishop back to e6, you just trade castles. Uh, we can turn on stockfish here. And this is still completely winning. So, I mean, bishop e6 is, is at this point the best move for black. It's the only thing that doesn't drop a piece. So, bishop to f5 is what black should play and castles e6, but then white here has this really nice move that I showed also in the last video of knight to g5, threatening to play rook takes f5 and knight takes f7 in some order. And so black here needs to know this move that um, it seems 56% of people have found it, bishop to g6, but then there's these really, really nice sacrifices, bishop takes e6, uh, that uh, I'm <laughs> very, very excited about. So black here has this nice option of uh, h6, if they really know what they're doing, you see, it's not a good ratio of 1,400 to 18 of people who found this move h6. But so basically, bishop takes e6. I mean, the, the, the problem with white's, with, with black's light square bishop is, so, okay, it came out with bishop f5. You know, it's stopping us on this diagonal, right? And it's stopping these threats here. And it didn't go to bishop g4, right? And, and blunder the knight e5 and the checkmate ideas. But now it can't stay on f5 either because there's take and takes on f7 ideas. For example, bishop e7 uh, here, black is completely losing. And with h6, we just need to take here, rook takes f5, and again, black is completely losing due to these nice pin ideas. So bishop to g6, so finally it dodges like all these landmines, but now it's not on this diagonal to guard against e6. It's not a, a along here to guard over there. So after bishop takes e6, I mean, this position is very interesting. Stockfish is not a fan. Lila is more sympathetic to white's cause here. So h6 is the best move, and I'll just touch on that first. So basically, we have to sacrifice everything. And in this position, I mean, it's pretty interesting. You see it hasn't occurred too many times in the database here. But what we want to do is simply bring in our pieces. This bishop can come to e5 really nicely. Uh, and actually, one of these games you see in the database, there's two games in that database. Oh, look at that. One of them is a win by W. Grafe. <laughs> so that's funny. Uh, that, that, that's actually in a separate YouTube video of of uh, my my perfect Lee Chess Arena, which I'll also link. But so that, 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 that's pretty funny. I don't want to put the same game on two separate YouTube videos. But basically, I mean, this bishop comes to e5. These rooks double up here. These knights come to e4. Uh, and this is the absolute best best that black can play. I mean, three twelve moves of the game. But there's still a lot of pressure on f6. I mean, black is up a piece for a pawn, but they have no development and their king's on f7, and they, they're still going to... Uh, have to defend here and so i don't know it's fun for white in a blitz game I, I would not recommend this in like a classical game against a strong player or anything but after bishop takes e6 anyway probably you're going to get f takes e6 and he takes and then i mean i think there's more theory to develop here but i mean the queen's hit and it should go to a square like d7 but against any move i'm going to recommend bishop to g5 and i've actually gotten quite a few of these actually i hadn't even prepared this but let me see if i've gotten 
Have I gotten this position? No. But you know what we'll do? You know what we'll do? Let's go to chess.com slash explorer right now. And let me show a couple of my games where I've actually gotten a couple quick knockouts in this exact line. I didn't even... I didn't even uh, plan on showing this. Oh wow, that's totally misproportioned. So what we're going to do is change the scene. Let's just fix this. Bear with me, YouTube. All right. We're ready. So, I've played a few Von Hennig Gambits. I think I, I, I recall getting some of these interesting uh, lines here, where Black is playing the Stockfish recommendations. E6, Knight G5, Bishop G6, Bishop takes E6. So I have here two games, and one of these I won. <laughs> what happened here? So this is against the 2310. And yeah, so he, here's my recommendation of just going bishop to g5. And basically, so my opponent actually blunders and allows me to go knight takes g7. But so the point of this line is that when they take your knight, no matter where that queen actually came from, the point of bishop to g5 is that you're not going to be having rook e1 if there's knight e4. Right? So we can d kind of hold our knight here. And our white, I mean, black just cannot let white's knight stay here. It just cuts castling in every direction. Right, you can't castle here. You can't castle here. Like, like this white, this white knight just absolutely cannot stay there. And often it threatens things like knight takes g7 and recapturing on f6. And in this game, my opponent actually just let me take g7 and let me put even more pressure on f6 here. Uh, but with now this pin as well, so that knight had to be eliminated. Uh, check, king steps over. So now my queen's under attack because there's no pin over there. But we keep coming at them with uh, this really nice sacrifice. This is, th th this is the game I was remembering. Rook takes f6, we sacrifice that with now check and mate. That was uh, all a forced line. So I think that's a, that's a really nice one here. I can uh, put that in for a game review. But just, just I think, some, some cool lines here, even though Stockfish is not a fan of this. Basically, all you need to do is know to play bishop to g5. Uh, and the scene is wrong again. Bear with me one moment. We'll just crop that. I'm keeping this take. I think this was this is still good stuff. <laughs> all right, all right, we're back. So bishop to g5. If they take our knight, basically the point of this line is now we take this on f6, and now we have rookie one. And this is, I think, actually the full stockfish recommendation, I believe. Uh, well, this actually evaluates to approximate equality. But I mean, what a crazy line! What a crazy line! I'm, I'm actually not sure what stockfish recommends. It's queen takes e6. And now, oh, a king move. But I don't think that this position has ever occurred. Oh, five people have found this move, king to d7. Really interesting stuff. But, I mean, overwhelmingly, you're going to get g takes f6, and then some interesting line positions here. Some interesting positions here where black has a few pieces for the queen, but I think it just seems not fun because white's pieces are coming in and attacking... Uh, this this king, queen h4 can come, attack this pawn. So I think a re really good positions here in, in the von Hennig. And so similarly, similarly, there's this other move here, bishop to f5. Uh, just not even allowing our favorite pawn takes f3. So just trying to hold this pawn on e4. And this move is a pretty good one. Because like the stockfish recommendation here is, I believe, g4 and g5. Just attacking these two pieces, forcing this knight to move. And then we get our pawn back, and here actually black's just a tiny bit better because this pawn's like a bit awkward here. I mean, you, you, there's no harm in playing it like this, but you know what channel you came to, you know that there's going to be a gambit crazy sacrifice recommendation coming up next. So here, I mean, you could, again, be a normal person playing knight f3, but the issue is that uh, black did achieve what they wanted, which is their extra pawn and control over this diagonal, which keeps their king here relatively safe. So, so, here's my crazy recommendation. You'll see it all the way down here. It is sacrificing on f7. It is sacrificing on f7, following this up with queen f3. And so this is really interesting here because black must be very, very precise. We are threatening to win our piece back in two ways. We're down a full piece right now, pawn count being equal, a six apiece. 
we we're going to win a full piece right now. So if they play a move like queen takes here, then we just take there and we are, uh, well, equal in material and also their king's on f7. So this, you know, can't possibly be fun for black. Otherwise, similarly, if e6 just defends this, then knight takes e4 and white is doing excellently. So the only move that black has here is knight to d6, which saves their knight here. Uh, and we'll also save their bishop on f5. If they play knight takes e3, then we can collect the bishop with check and also get this back. You see that's a couple hundred games there. Anyway, knight d6 here. And so we need to get our piece back, and so we'll play this move g4. So that takes advantage of the fact that there's a pin here. And if black is precise, they'll play this move e6. Queen d7 is also playable, but all we need to do really is take, take. And here we're just down one pawn, and their king's on f7, right? <laughs> like, this is a great, great compensation. We're going to castle. We're going to be totally safe over here. This knight will come out and our rooks will have a field day down these open files where our opponent's king is. So this is a very, very nice position, I believe. So e6 is what black sh should play. And we can hold off on takes f5. I think the really interesting move here is knight to h3, threatening to come in with knight to g5 check. And I'll show you what you're dealing with here on the engine. The engine thinks that with precise play, black can just be up their pawn that they're up right now. And a uh, queen h4 check is a good move. That is a good place to start, actually. I think the issue is if bishop to e7, then yeah, there's this nice move, just bishop f4. This bishop's not going anywhere because this is a, a killer discovered check. So bishop to f4, we get that piece back, we castle again, and you operate down these open files. So queen to h4 check being the best move for black. And now here knight f2 is necessary. And this engine off, it's making things lag. Queen knight f2 is, is the best option for white here because it blocks the check, and we'll also defend our g4 pawn, which we desperately need to get a piece back. So now if we move just like bishop e7, and here, here I think white has a few options. Nothing wrong with just taking the bishop, really. And after knight takes f5, this move worked to g1. It's really interesting. So, <laughs> like, like, okay, what's going on here? What's going on? Have, have I just been, you know, just, just clicking spacebar and following everything Stockfish says? I mean, so... What black wants is to castle manually here, like get that rook on the other side of their king to step back, but it's not going to be very easy here. I think the most natural move being rook to f8. After rook to g4 here, which is a good move, queen takes h2 is almost the only spot this queen can go. I think after queen h5 is one of the only other spots. Rook takes g7 is actually winning the queen here because it's check and we are just going to take the queen next turn. They don't have knight takes because of uh, this pin, so our queen's doing an excellent job there. And so here, black can play your queen takes h2, bishop f4, and again, their queen is in hot water if that's, or, or I think maybe they're okay with, yeah, queen h5. Okay, yeah, in this position, they have knight takes. So they have knight takes to protect their queen. But okay, just castles here, and white's doing excellently. So very interesting lines, very interesting lines. In summary, in summary, I'm trying to tackle, like, the, the absolute best lines that black can play and you know what 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 can we do against this i always love going up against the stockfish recommendation you know you can't you can't just dodge it all the time i think there's too much content out there which just like doesn't recommend the best option for your opponents to play and so then it just doesn't work when you start playing it in actual games you know you're like you're like okay you're just playing for tricks i don't want to just play for tricks you know, I, 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 I want to have fun no matter what my opponent go, does. I don't want to just be hoping for any particular lines. So that's why I try to provide you with the best content I can. So after pawn takes e4, so basically we have this position in the, the Von Hennig Gambit. D takes e4, bishop c4 is the start of it. Knight f6, I mean, there's really no other move. I mean, they could play bishop f5 first, but again, this could transpose. If they play bishop to f5 now, basically our idea is that we want to take on f7, and go queen f3, and here you're going to take one of these pieces, knight d6 being the only move for black in this position. I'll prove that to you. And g4. And then basically, I mean, if you don't want to remember everything from here, this knight can come to f2 uh, to shield against queen to h4 checks. Uh, after taking here, the bishop's coming f4, our king's going to castle, be nice and safe here, and our rooks are just going to attack, and we're just going to have fun. That's why I think a lot of these model games are, you know, more helpful than actual theory in these lines. And if pawn takes f3, uh, here, if bishop to g4, we have this really, really nice move, knight to e5, a threatening mate, and, you know, really, <laughs> really fun queen sacrifice. If e6, we, it blocks this bishop out, and so our bishop is going to have a lot, a lot of fun on that diagonal, making these great uh, checkmating threats. And so if bishop to f5, which is one of the other options so they can take and play bishop f5, or defend their pawn with bishop f5. So here we have this castle's knight g5 idea, threatening one of these captures, and in this position we have this bishop takes e6 sacrifice 
uh, even if they do everything, everything right, there's really no place for them to hide. They're going to have to deal with my craziness, our craziness at some point. Okay, Gambit Chads, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And yeah, have, have a great day. And you, you, you should go beat those GMs too. Peace out.